الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله لا إله إلا الله علي ولي بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين There is a statement by some people that most narrations that describe the characteristics of, of Ahl al-Bayt in the Shia Imami books of Hadith are exaggerated ghulu based narrations. As a result, it is not possible to rely and depend on these books in their entirety because they include ghulu based exaggerated narrations about Ahlul Bayt. May Allah's blessings and peace be upon them. In the context of answering and discussing this statement, we shall mention a number of points. Firstly, it is necessary to define the term ghulu, religious exaggeration, so that we can judge whether the narrations reported in the books of Hadith are really ghulu narrations or not. So what does ghulu mean? When we witness Shia scholars of Rijal, the science of narrators, such as Al-Kashi, Al-Najashi, Al-Shaykh al tusi describing certain narrators as being Mughali, exaggerators, or that they have ghulu beliefs, such as Muhammad ibn Aruma, or how Muhammad ibn Sinan was described, among others. So we ask, what does this ghulu mean? If we refer to the book of Al-Qamus fi ilm al-Rijal by Al-Muhaqqiq al-Tustari, may Allah have mercy on him, one of the very well-versed scholars in this science, one finds that he defines the ghulu in question to be belief of the lordship of the imams, peace be upon them, rububiyya of the imams. They are gods. In other words, to believe they were gods or to believe that they were prophets and that an imam is a prophet or to believe that their love alone is sufficient and if one loves them, then they do not need to fulfill religious obligations or stay away from sins. This is the true reality of what Ghulu is. And various narrations from Ahlul Bayt, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings be upon them all, attest to this meaning. Among them is the narration reported by Shaykh al-Saduq through his chain from Ibrahim ibn Abi Mahmud in which he says, I asked Ar-Rida alayhi salam, O son of the Messenger of Allah, we have received narrations concerning the virtues of the Commander of Faithful, Amir al muminin and yourselves, Ahlul Bayt. And they have been narrated by those who oppose your Imama. The narrators are not your followers, they are your opposers. And we have not found such narrations amongst the hadith that have been narrated from yourselves. So should we adhere to them in our faith? He responded, alayhi salam, O son of Abi Mahmoud, our opposers have fabricated three types of narrations concerning our virtues. The first type of narrations are those that have exaggeration. The second are those that have taqseer, meaning that belittling their status and their rank. And the third are those that openly defame our enemies. So when people hear narrations that exaggerate and have ghulu regarding us, 
They label our followers as disbelievers and kafir and accuse them of believing us to have independent lordship. So notice he is making Ghulu to be equal to the belief in the lordship of the Imams. When they hear narrations that belittle our rank and our status, the taqseer in our position, they believe in them and if they hear narrations which defame our enemies by name then then defame us by name as a result we conclude that ghulu means to believe that the imams are gods or to say that they are prophets or to believe that their love and to follow them alone suffices a person from needing to perform religious obligations and from having to stay away and avoid the great sins. When we survey the narrations which we find in the books of Hadith, we cannot find a single reliable and authentic narration which includes such content. Not a single reliable Hadith with its chain of narrators not a single reliable, considerable and authentic narration which has this type of ghulu content that would lead us to say that the majority of our narrations are ghulu and exaggeration narrations. However, there is an individual view adopted by Muhammad ibn al-Hasan ibn al-Walid may Allah's mercy be on him who was the teacher of Shaykh al-Saduq, may Allah have mercy on them. He believed that to reject the fact the Prophet, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send blessings on him and his family, could unintentionally make a mistake. Nafyu sah is the first degree of religious exaggeration. So he considered rejecting the fact that the Prophet could unintentionally make a mistake or overlook a matter to be ghulu, although this is his personal view. The proof that this is a very specific view of this individual is that no book has ascribed this view to anybody other than Shaykh al-Saduq and his teacher Muhammad ibn al-Hasan ibn al-Walid. This means that the mainstream view and the definition of ghulu according to our righteous scholars is the first meaning which we explained. This is the first point. Secondly, when one says that the majority of our narrations are narrations of ghulu, this person is either a jahil, an ignorant, who has no knowledge about our narrations, or God forbid, he's a liar. This is because when we take the oldest book of hadith that we have, which is Al-Kafi of Shaykh Al-Kulayni, we see that Al-Kafi is divided, the book, into Usul Al-Kafi and Rawdat Al-Kafi. Rawdat Al-Kafi consists of a few volumes, all of which are related to the rules and rulings of worship and transactions. Then we come to the Usul al-Kafi, which includes chapters about knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ma'rifatullah and Allah's attributes, chapters about knowing Ahlul Bayt. When we come to the chapters regarding knowing Ahlul Bayt, we find that many of them are related to providing special evidence from the Prophet, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, about them and describing their personal characteristics, personalities, virtues and praiseworthy traits. However, we have not found any narrations that bear ghulu. If there were any ghulu based narrations, if there was, then the proportion and the percentage compared to the narrations that describe Ahlul Bayt and the characteristics of Ahlul Bayt is very, very low. Then how can someone come to say that the majority of Ahadith about Ahlul Bayt in the books of Hadith are narrations that bear ghulu? How can someone say that? We challenge any truthful person who has performed a complete survey and research and reached to this alleged conclusion. Thirdly, when we say that the majority of our narrations are based on ghulu, 
Okay, this means that there must be a methodology that they base this claim on. In other words, I cannot say that the content of this narration has ghulu, except if I have a special methodology to categorize and distinguish between ghulu based narrations and other narrations. If I have a methodology based on supported by evidence and proofs which would distinguish ghulu based narrations from other narrations and I come across narrations which contradict this methodology and criteria which I may have adopted then I can say that these narrations have ghulu content. However, the current scientific research and methodology shows that these narrations are supported with evidence. The narrations that discuss the infallibility of Ahlul Bayt, their supernatural knowledge of the unseen and of them performing karamat and supernatural feats and miracles. These are all authentic narrations with sound chains and are supported with the rational evidence which is mentioned by our righteous scholars in their books. When you refer to to the book Dala'il al-Sidq by al-Shaykh al-Mudaffar or the book Al-Shafi fil Imama by Al-Sayyid al-Murtada or if you refer to Al-Shaykh al-Mufid's book in which he explains the beliefs of Shaykh al-Saduq you find that they presented the rational evidence to prove these beliefs. So if there is any scientific refutation and discussion then one should refute these proofs. But to merely claim that they say that the books of hadith consist of and contain narrations that have ghulu and religious exaggeration and as a result we cannot rely on them such a claim is not scientific and is not supported by any scientific rational methodology the scientific methodology requires you to go to the books that discuss these beliefs and they present the evidence and the proof to support those beliefs. The scientific methodology is for you to refute their proofs and evidence if you have such a scientific and rational level.